Hey everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today I am going to be doing something we haven't done on this acrylic channel before. I'm going to show you how to paint on paper with acrylic in kind of a watercolor style. You don't need to go get anything different um, than your paints and regular brushes. It would help to have watercolor paper, but if you want to follow along on canvas, you can do that as well. On the mic is my husband, John. Hello. He helps me bring this step-by-step -step acrylic lesson for beginners to you by making sure that the camera is pointing at whatever I'm talking about. So if I'm demonstrating a technique, you can see it. If I'm mixing a color, you can see it because what you can see, you can duplicate at home. This is the last show of 2021 for us. That's, ah, that's what you said. That's what I said. And that's what I meant. You won't see us again until sometime in January. Mm -hmm. So I hope you're here to celebrate the year with us um, and to do this really cool lesson. now. Um, if I can be shrunk it down so I, I can go over materials. Hold on a second. I'm going to give gonna... you some knowledge. I'm going to drop some knowledge on you. So this here is the Artistico Extra White 100% Cotton Watercolor Paper, and it's 140 pounds. This is really essential in um, painting on papers. Uh, 140 pounds. I wouldn't go down a weight from that. If you don't have a watercolor block, which is what this is, that's where all the little pages are glued together. Um, what you want to do is stretch your paper. Um, I don't currently have a video on how to stretch, but it's a pretty simple process. And if you search stretch uh, watercolor paper, you'll find a lot of like 10 minute solutions. And I'll make one really soon. Mm. So you have a sharper one that you can do. The acrylic paint I'm using today is Cad Red Medium, Cad Yellow Medium, Thalo Green, Burn Sienna, Altarine Blue, Thalo Blue, Fluid Titanium White, Heavy Body Titanium White, and Mars black that is what we're doing we're going to do steps and everything as per the usual mm -hmm. with a reference picture where we end up is going to be surprising them so um if you're going to do this on a canvas or surface it's a good idea to have it prepped for watery applications um that way you don't have to wait on the binding and everything and you can use watercolor grounds for that it's a good way to get that there you can buy those at the store called watercolor grounds they're fun or you can buy an aqua canvas and they'll say aqua canvas, which just means you can get all wet and watery. But let's do this on paper because I don't think you guys have seen this before. And I think this is really cool. And maybe we'll do more of this if you like it. So let me know if you like it. Okay. All right. Here's a spray bottle. It's filled with just water. I'm going to mist the paper. And I'm going to take a nice big mop brush. Let's grab our Princeton mop. And I'm going to kind of spread that water out. Is this a step? Oh, yes. Now, I, I also, while we're stepping... Step. I see normally step your, one your, your little person your miniature person uh -huh. is reversed for everyone yeah and that's because it makes your hand movements align with your actions on screen but today because it says hp and you don't want it to say ph and everyone was like why is it reversed so that's what's going on here so i am wetting the paper <laughs> that that <laughs> public service announcement is the hype. We're wetting the paper. We don't want to soak, soak, soak it. We want it damp. I'm going to use this again. This is just a one and a one inch Princeton mop in the Select Line series. So then I'm going to do the wash in the background. All right. I'm going to get a little bit of my ultramarine blue, and I'm going to just on the paper wet out a little of that paint. Very soft effect, isn't it? Mm. I can get a little white, add that in. A lot of the techniques, if you do the watercolor channel with me that we do over there, are really doable over here as well. A lot of the stuff is very similar. And you can get a lot of the same cool results and the same softening of uh, the items in the picture. So you can see how even here, I'm doing little light brushes in a crisscross of positioning, not X's, because that would be very patterned, but just sort of a random soft out of focus. This is another way to get to Boca. Mm. You're like, how do I get to Boca? How do I get to Santa Fe? You get, you go this way. I'm going to take a little ultramarine blue and burn sienna, and they make a nice gray together. Come up here and put out a little of that gray. And again, blending down, everything is still wet. Some of it here could be just in the brown. 
Everything is still wet. You can see it's starting to dry up here in the corner, so I'll add a little more water to my brush. I haven't switched to watercolor brushes. I'm just using my regular acrylic brushes. And I keep my watercolor brushes out of this activity because just like regular times, acrylic is hard on uh, natural hair brushes because of its pH, so I don't want to encourage that here. A little more of my paint wetting it down there you can see it kind of activates it so the sizing in the paper is really interesting within this i'm going to take a little of my phthalo blue and ultramarine blue and also pop maybe some clear little moments of blue there this is sort of fun isn't it and it's very loose look how abstracted this background is right it's very nice and get a little white into it too you can see that still does put a little white back in. You want it there. And then I'm going to do something very, very important. I'm going to splatter with my splattering tool a little bit of my titanium white paint. And you're going to see it snowflakes out right away. See that? Mm. Best technique in the universe. Splattery. It is, but instead of being just little dots, you can see that the paper, because it's wet and there's paint, capillaries this through it, creating that loose effect of snow. I don't know how close we can get up on it. Yeah. I think you guys are going to love it. Give it a focus. Yeah, let them see that go. Oh, there we go. That's looking pretty good. Okay. Look at that. Isn't that a beautiful, beautiful distant snow effect? Love it. Love it, love it, love it. So the paper is very warbled at this stage, even though it is uh, glued down on all sides. That is normal. As the paper gets wet, it expands at different rates, and that causes a buckling. Um, that's why pre-stretching is done by a lot of artists. But on the block, what will happen is as this dries, it will stretch it down. Now, I don't, I don't have, uh, you know, the 30 minutes to watch it dry. <laughs> <laughs> I can take some questions and let it dry a little bit if you want to throw up the chat or ask me some oh, questions. Yeah. Well, let me do that um, but then I'm going to ha hair dry it and then you, but you let yours dry and resolve because the longer it sits there and the more naturally it dries, the softer and softer and more diffused this technique is going to get. Virginia Walsh says this is beautiful and fun. Oh, and it's so good to see you guys today. I don't know how many people found us today. Hello, Jolie uh, Blondie. How are you doing? And I see Hope Healer and um, Piotr H. We have more and more people coming in the room here. It's fun minute. stuff, guys. We're just under 200 right now. So this is just, you know, it's just softening out. It's just going to continue to diffuse. In watercolor, if you're one of my acrylic students, this is something you might not know. Watercolor develops. Um, especially in a wet and wet technique. And I find I don't really see a painting almost till the next day if I allow it to process itself uh, very naturally. I tend to not like to hurry along. Um, look at that beautiful effect. Look at what that's doing. And I didn't have to go out and buy any new tools. Hi, Karen. This is cool because I've been wondering about this very thing and I've been painting Christmas cards. Oh, this is a good technique for a Christmas card. This is just Christmas card you up real fast. This is the best, funnest snow you will ever do. Funnest snow. It just is a very satisfying snow. Now, again, I'm going to accelerate the drying of this paper with my hair dryer so that I can paint over the surface. But my recommendation is truly that you guys allow it to restretch at home if you have the luxury of that. Mm. John is going to... Um, Tara says, I just joined. Is this being done with acrylics? This is being done entirely with acrylics and acrylic brushes. We're just doing it on paper. You want to see the technique that did the snow. You're going to love it, Tara. It's amazing. And you will want to do it on everything. It's super fun. Also, is a pretty good rainy day technique as well. Snow, like, like sea foam. There's a lot of places to use this. And you can see it just gets better and better and better. And 
it'd be very hard on canvas to do this mm. with the diffusion that you see here unless it was an aqua canvas you just wouldn't quite get the softening and bokeh of the background and the and the softening of the snow all right i'm gonna try john's gonna talk to you for a second okay. and then we're gonna do another step so sherry was asking can you use acrylic with watercolor on the same surface generally yes there's some like things you should know about mixing media but uh, generally those two are highly compatible with each other. Uh, oftentimes you'll find that the watercolor won't stick to the acrylic um, just because of the nature of it. So if you're going to go over acrylic, you may have to go back with an acrylic with a watercolor ground. Um, and a watercolor ground is this material that makes uh, watercolor stick to acrylic surfaces really good. So it's just one of those cool things you'll learn about as you get into art. Um, thank you for joining us. Don't forget, uh, hit the like button below. Are you ready to step? This is a step. Uh, step. Of this bird. Heather C., thank you so Winter. much for the, oh, she brought On snacks for Jen night. Butterfly. So. <laughs> so virtual snacks. All right. Now, again, on this, good paper is a big deal. If you can't get the Artistico, the other I like is the Strathmore 140-pound watercolor block brown cover. A brown cover one. Really like that one as well. How it has a good now? sizing on it. How brown now, brown cow? Cover? Brown cover. All right. Now, the paper is still actually technically wet. It's just surface dry. But through the fibers, through the thick paper, it's still wet. It's still going to warble. Moist. That's okay. I don't really need anything else. If you're doing a traceable, this would be the moment you would put me on pause and do your transfer onto the surface. Good. I'm going to freehand and show you this step by step as I draw it out. But if you're going to use the traceable, this step is where you'd want to put that in and utilize oh. that. What does hmm. bokeh mean? Bokeh means a soft diffuse background. It's a photography effect. Sometimes it's little circles, like most people think of the little circles, but that's actually a lensing flare. It's um, that fuzzy background effect. Fuzzy background. His book. It, it actually specifically applies to how light plays in making these circles due to the lens effect mm -hmm. of the of that. Yeah, you know, we're gonna split hairs. Yeah. So it's a no, no, it's not just the circles anymore. It's not. It's the yeah. it's the out of focus of the, the, old, the lens. The whole effect. You can put a filter and make hearts. You can make different things. Swirl. That's a photography problem. Um, my question is similar to Jen Butterfly. Can you wet a dried canvas and then do the snow effect and have it bloomed like that? Mm. So, Linda, you can. What happens is is that if you water down your acrylics, they struggle to bind. Golden did some studies that maybe if you allow it to cure for two or three weeks, the binding will happen. So you'd have to do the background and let it sit for two or three weeks um, with the snow effect and all that and then come back. Um, other than that, you have to do an aqua canvas or you have to prep the canvas for this effect. There are preps. There are preps. They're called watercolor grounds. I just mentioned those, didn't I? Yes. All right. You didn't know because you were. You I was were, just so busy monologuing like a villain. No, you were draw. You were drying. I was drying. So how I'm going to take. Uh, this is just a round brush. This is a Simply Simmons number eight round. It is the uh, really common one you find everywhere. So it's an acrylic brush, but it's. I don't really use it for heavy body generally. And I'm going to come in and just kind of very washily sort of sketching so you can see it's sort of watered down washily washily i like that kind of sketching some branches positioning it refers to how i do lots of things does it washily i like to just kind of sketch that in and that's Bring a little branch over there. It's always interesting. You now I've got another little one coming down here. And then we've got a bit happening up there. I'm going to go ahead and get a little of my black into my brown. A lot of water on my brush. Much more than I usually have, right? This is that soft first application. So where I'm normally trying to kind of keep the water out, like this would be too much too watery for canvas normally. Mm. It's just perfect for paper. You're gonna love this finished effect. It's really gorgeous. I do this sometimes in a lifebook. 
and uh, everybody really enjoys it. And take a little bit of my brown and black and come here and kind of maybe wash in what would be the basic shape of a pine cone. Not going to try to do too much. And on the traceable, you have all the little pine cone bits. All the pine cone bits. But right now, we're just kind of getting the silhouette of it in. We'll put all the detail in later when we're doing the thick applications of paint. Right now, we're not doing thick applications, so we don't have to do it yet. For a pretty good bit on the paper, you can paint in watery techniques. Um, it takes a little while for the paper to seal. One of the ways that uh, painting on paper in a watercolor method with acrylics is a little different is that eventually the acrylic polymer seals the paper and it just stops absorbing and softening. Hmm. That's all that's, that's happening there. I'm going to continue on kind of creating this little silhouette. See, I feel like this is almost kind of a star flower. So I'm gonna bring this shape around a little more black. I can even get a little blue into this if I want to. So this little pine cone will be facing us. I just want its little silhouette there. I'm just capturing the shapes, not the details. And we'll come in and put each individual pine cone so you see these are kind of like little amoeba weird flower shapes. <laughs> and that's okay. And then this one kind of is uh, facing upward, kind of going a different way. So I want to maybe think about those little outer quills. All right, let's call this a step because I want you to kind of capture these generalized shapes. Um, they're kind of a weird shape. So you may want to look at the steps when we do that. Um, oh, who did the little sticker? I missed the sticker. Oh, let me see here. I'll scroll up there for you real quick. Happy birthday, Anne. Hi, That's Heather C. Heather. Thank you so much. And happy birthday to Anne. Let's go down here and we'll make a little step. Make a little step. I'm going to continue on. I'm going to put in some distant little quills. So I'm going to take my green and my burnt sienna together and make kind of that deep pine green. Mm -hmm. Still the same brush. A lot of this painting is going to be done with this brush. And I'm going to be putting in some less focused, these will be less bright quills. Little lines, kind of the randomness of pines, right? Mm -hmm. It's soft. And as they soak into the paper, they soften and desaturate. Is there any tips on controlling 
how uh, quickly it will dry? Um, you know, again, uh, water. So if you want it to stay wet longer than when the paper's wet, it dries slower. Mm-hmm. You can have a humidifier by your table if you're trying to slow it down. If you're trying to speed it up, you could um, use a hairdryer. But again, I, I hope you're kind of seeing this. As this is drying, it's continuing to develop. And every time you accelerate that dry, you lose some of that hmm. development of it. And that's always kind of like a pretty big loss, I think. What about using slow dry acrylic? You can use slow dry acrylics. It does seal up the paper very quickly. Oh, yeah. I can see that. You know, so the blending medium is fantastic and absolutely works on paper where you're trying to get a blend, but you don't want to use it until you're ready for the paper to seal. Hmm. Just long brush strokes, and I'm trying to make them sort of random the way that pine needles can be. You know, and I want to take advantage of how... All the ones in my front yard are. (laughs) Some of these are just more in the background, right? Just more in the background. Rinse out. I'm going to go ahead and... um, Let's give this a little bit of a step and we'll refine some of the branches. You think there? Little step here. That's a step four. Yeah. We may may do too many steps, but at least it will be broken down. They're tiny steps. They're tiny steps. I'm going to make some orange. I want it to be very yellow orange. And I'm going to get some of my brown. Kind of work into it. If you have yellow ochre, you could probably, you know, use yellow ochre as well. And I'm going to tap out a little detailing on this soft, watery little branch. So in watercolor, you preserve your lightest colors and build up to your darkest. But in acrylic, you can go from darkest to lightest. So it's really interesting how we kind of play between those two places when we're doing acrylic uh, on paper in a watery method. Because all that we've done is we've just added a few techniques or a few possibilities to what can be done. You know, so we're just going to come through and... Tap some of this interesting color through. We know our little bird's going to be there, but we can paint our bird very opaquely. So it's really interesting. We can do all this sort of fun distant stuff and then come in later and really kind of pump it up. I'm going to take a little of my white into this mix and lighten it. You can add some black if you need to gray it a little, which we do because the wood. I'm going to just tap a little more of that out. See, it's just another little color. We're making some very rough little woods. Paying more attention than we usually do the branches Mm -hmm. because we've got the time. Sometimes I'll look and be like, oh, no, I want you to be a shade lighter Mm. than you are. And I'll add a little white, which is what I did there. When I come back with the dark contrast, that's where this branch will start to really take this on. And you can see even these little leaves here that they've softened into that background and they have almost like a little flaking of snow, it seems like. Yeah. So fascinating what you can do. 
On my own, I really like this method of painting. Everyone else is super excited about that. They would like, like they would definitely like more of this. It's just a really nice way to paint, and it opens up, oh gosh, so many possibilities of multimedia. You can get Posca pens involved. You can get watercolor pencils involved. You get pastels involved, regular pencils, just inks, everything. Uh, once you switch to paper, because the paper becomes the binder, sky's the limit. Then all you have to know is what paint will layer over, what, what art material will layer, and what art materials won't layer you know, and their order of layering. And that gets very exciting. Uh, <laughs> can a loose and accurate, is that a thing? Absolutely, it's a thing. Thank you, Karen. Oh, Karen Close, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. And thank everybody, the whole art family on Facebook as well. Do we have any Facebook questions that went over into the uh, main group thing? I will go, um, you know, I've been checking over here. Okay. Um, I just want to make Facebook, sure I remember. So Facebook has been finicky off and it's on. Now we've got, awful. we've been really great over here on YouTube. We've got like over 200 people. We're all doing pretty good. YouTube or Facebook's got about 100 people on it, but the, it keeps doing that connecty, disconnecty thing. So if you need to come over to YouTube, we're over here. Yeah. Now I mixed a little blue with my um, Mars Black. Come here. Ooh, there we go. Focus. I'm gonna add some deep little shadow into the branch. Yes, you can see it's just very uh, irregular, and to capture the roughness of what's going on, we're just really spending some time actually painting our branch. Because we can. Mm -hmm. We absolutely can. So nice. I'm on the toe of the brush. And I notice, again, Simply Simmons, number eight. So again, if you switch to paper, you can use the easy to find Simply Simmons short handles. I know the uh, extra firm filament can be really challenging to find. But this particular uh, middle filament is everywhere. Mm. It's like $3 a brush on, on most sales. The good thing about it is like the ferrules generally stay seated. The heads are fairly well made. The handles pop, which means all the coating comes off fairly quickly. <laughs> no matter how you care for your brush. That's just a part of the weakness of it being an economy brush, I suppose. Yeah, I think it's that they can't they can't dip redundantly and do as many good seals. Like brush handles are prop wood brush handles. I'm taking some cad yellow and cad red and a little burnt sienna. Okay, then go back to it. Brush okay. handles. Wood, wood brush handles are now probably um, one of the more cost-centered based components of traditional art brushes because they have to coat them so many times in order to get them to seal, and that has to be done kind of in an old-world style because there's not modern technology to do it really efficiently. This, so it's just... It's just some uh, one of those things. I'm just adding a little bit of that brightness to the wood. Yep. Um, It's always kind of a good idea to might bring a little of this out too. Little dashes of that out. Which might peek through some of our pine needles as they do. Kind of implying the little budlets. A little more yellow, some white. Just Ooh. capturing a little light here and there on some of this. They would like to see you do this with inks too. Oh, you can absolutely use inks in this. I just, I've seen you play with inks and it is enjoyable. It is. It's a lot of fun. I would Not like everywhere. To. I'm just dabbling a little sunlight. I would it might totally have watch caught it. in the branch. Again. Okay. 
So this is that step. But look at our branch now. Doesn't, this, doesn't it come alive? So we have this most amazing snow technique, and you can see the paper is calming and flattening. You're watching the stretch happen. And, um, man, oh, and it's cheaper and easier to just frame paper because you just pop that in a pre-made frame with a mat and you're done. Um, <laughs> so it's a really nice thing. All right, let's continue on with our story. And I think in the next part of the story, I'm going to go back into my pine needles again, um, but a little crisper. And I'm going to add a little white, maybe even a little yellow to some of the needles. And let's paint little hard lines. those nice lines it's important to just breathe relax and layer those layers, man. They're a big deal. I can come get some of my dark in there as well. That's sort of fun. Make sure I've got a little dark going. The darkness. And because you can thin the paint so much, the line quality gets a lot better. That's something you'll immediately notice. That if you've been struggling with line quality, the paper stabilizing the paint and you being able to water down the acrylic. Doesn't that just improve the line quality so much? So how'd you get so good at this? This? Just your art in general. How'd you I, get so this? I'm very blessed. I got to grow up art. Um... We had uh, multi-generational creatives in my family on both sides. So I'm very lucky that my parents themselves perceived art as like a real thing that you could do <laughs> as a person. <laughs> you know, I had photographers on my dad's side of the family and painters on my mom's and she paints. And so I always got to do this. Um, a long time I thought that there was something called talent. I don't believe in talent anymore, but when I was young, I did believe in talent. And the reason for that was, is that, you know, I grew up and, and heard, oh, you have a lot of talent all the time. What I didn't realize is what I had was a lot of access and a lot of positive reinforcement and a lot of access to education so I could build up a lot of art skills. You had a lot of experience points in art. I had a lot of experience points in my art, yeah. And that really made... A big, big difference. So the more experience points you could put in art, the better. The much better. It's not a dump stat. <laughs> it's not a dump stat. That's right. So I'm adding just a little ultramarine blue here, kind of creating a shadow. Because we're going to actually highlight some of these pine needles. We're going we're gonna to light some pine needles. We're not just decorative painting pine needles today. They have lighting. Value, shape, form. You know, um, I can tell you, you can get anywhere in art you want to be. It's just about hanging in and taking your pace and your time and recognizing that talent, what we tend to refer to as talent, um, is just a lot of skills with a person who can tell their life experiences through those skills on surface or in sculpture. It's all, all that's happening there. And then we resonate. We see that truth in that. And we go, oh, they're so talented. Well, not that there is an aptitude. Some people have an easier time doing something. But aptitude and talent are two different things. 
Did I ever paint ceramics? Uh, yeah, my uh, uncle was a Jensen. My uncle Jensen was a big potter. And uh, so he had, he had a kiln so large it was the size of a room you could walk in it. We have some of his stuff. We have some of his stuff, and it was really beautiful. Very, very Sabinese kind of stuff. We'd, he made sinks and all kinds of utilitarian wares. He even had a gallery in um, Washington State. See, family of artists. <laughs> Just Look. a believable story when you're like, I want to be an artist when I grow up. They go, oh, yes, that's a, that's a thing that you could do. And um, so what, I, what about glazes is so different is because it's, you know, you're melting this glass on the surface of your ceramic. And the, the, the glass is kind of like the pigment, and, and it can move on you. So that's always interesting. You have to really understand your chemistry as well as the placement of what you're putting out there. Um, and that was just so fun. Doing anything with Jensen was just a ton of fun. Really great uncle. I'm going to get a little bit of the white into this, and I've gotten a little yellow into it. I'm creating a much lighter value. We're going to come here. And say that some of these needles are lighter than other needles. Hmm. Did you leave your purple purple coffee cup over there? Yeah. Okay. And and I think my coffee is cold, and I'm sure it needs to heat up. Huh? Well, I have a regular cup you could heat up and then throw in the purple if you didn't want to be doing that all day. <laughs> I get that. I'm going to put some at the tips here. Get right into my white and kind of... Shade that out a bit. Now, interestingly, the bird's placement is in front of and behind some of the needles. So we've got to paint a certain number of needles, you know, with before we even put the bird in. We've just got snow to put in and some different stuff. Putting a little lightness to here. What's funny? Small shopping spree. Just a small. Oh man, my kids work me so good. They do. How are you guys doing? Are you enjoying this? So this is where we're at. We've just got some nice little pine needles in this beautiful little background. This bird's gonna be so stunning. He's gonna be like Audubon Society fun. There I am. This is a step. Ah, step. No. In this next step, I'm going to get out my little dome round blender because it makes really good snow. And I'm going to put in some snow. I'm going to take my white paint over here to my ultramarine blue. And there is some brown there. So it kind of grays out. It's the heavy body. Oh, thank you, Ashley. Ashley, thank you. And I'm going to put a little bucket of snow right here. We'll reset bloop. that next one. See, and I'm going to have to layer because this, right, has pine needles that layer around it as well. So we have shading to do, which is what we're doing here. That's sort of blue snow, better than the yellow snow. And we're putting little bits of snow out. We can exaggerate snow if we feel like it. That is allowed. Mm. 
Let's come up here and add a little bit. And I might add some snow even where it's not in the reference just because it would be lovely. And having a little bit of lovely snow in a couple of places is very enjoyable. When you're out doing all your Christmas fun stuff, don't forget on your new smart TVs to install the Art, Art Sherpa, Sherpa app. Ch the <laughs> channel for your Roku. <laughs> so you can watch us. <laughs> on Cause, Roku. Because we're doing more stuff over there. Roku. Because Roku's cool, dude. Like, Roku's everywhere. It is. Now, I don't even have to let this dry too much. I've rinsed out my brush. I'm going to get some more white on here. I'm going to get brighter white for sure. I'll just sort of use this brush. Doesn't it do a nice snow? It does. It blends. It does snow. What doesn't it do? I don't know. It does everything. Does it make waffles? Give me a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I'll find out. <laughs> don't make food with your art supplies. <laughs> don't do it. Just adding a little bit of that. Oh. Hmm? Yeah, there's, I mean, so many folks have so many different art experiences and they're just sharing up in oh, chat. Oh, wonderful. It's, uh, it's really interesting. Thank you, Mike. Uh, I'm not sure if it's Michael or Michelle, because I think that can go either way. I think it's Michelle. Um, I was forbidden to do art when my father found out it, it was a bad day. Okay. Let's go back. If you recall, my father was a professional artist when he was alive, and we had a very different experience. You were forbidden to do art from a professional artist? It's kind of... <sighs> huh. Uh, 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 so I'm not going to speak on your situation. I'm going to speak on what I've seen to all young aspiring artists out there. In my experience, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop for a minute because I can. And you, and you come in and sit in with me. Are you gonna? Spe now I have to monologue like a. I have to monologue like a villain right now. Okay. Because this like is a, a big so soapbox. It up. Oop, hold on. Okay. I'm drag you over here. So here's the thing. In my experience, um, in the art world, there are artists that um, uh, are very driven and 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 they go a traditional art path. You know, uh, galleries and those kinds of things. She's um, got seriousness. I'm gonna zoom in a little. <laughs> So, in depending on their relationship to business, they have very different experiences. Uh, I, I've gotten to see all kinds of professional artists, and it definitely there are camps of artists who have either a business manager or they were given enough business experience and marketing to understand that that's an equal part of it, and so they have one kind of experience. Um, and then uh, artists that, uh, you know, are kind of in that, oh, I've got to be discovered and, and I'm just going to work hard and produce a lot of art, but they don't understand that galleries will rip them off and they don't understand that people will negotiate price. Like that business part of it is missing. They can have a really bad experience. And I'm not saying this is your, your dad. I'm just saying that I've seen. So artists that I've seen speak bitterly, like we had a very good friend, uh, Bruce, and he worked at Disney, incredibly talented. He did a lot of commercial stuff. But he had a very bad business experience, and that made him bit it bitter about his art experience, mm. right? Um, and that's not every Disney artist. Like, a lot of Disney artists have a great experience, but there is a bitter experience that you can have as an artist. Yeah, it's possible. For sure. And that is always about, did you get your business kit together? Mm. One way or another. Manager, partner, you yourself have to have your business uh kit together to have that kind of positive experience yeah you know in selling your work my pause you you know uh you and, and it, it's really done like you look at um thomas kincaid and howard barons had two very different very similar artists coming up success in a similar way at the same time howard barons had his name stolen his collection stolen and was destitute in his car by the end of his career he had a hard time Thomas Kincaid, who had a brilliant business partner, ended up being traded on the stock market and had galleries opened everywhere. And he was like a Disney artist and he was like a force. And I don't know, he rebranded Cadmium Yellow as the glow paint. That was a whole thing. But that was about that business experience. And he even went back and helped Howard. 
And Howard could not have been a better painter. He was a great painter. Um, but, man, he didn't read the contract. And artists get really weird. They get afraid of lawyers, and they get afraid of reading the contract, and they get afraid of finding out. Um, and I think the reason that uh, my family had a more positive thing around it is uh, the strong business mm-hmm. in it. Like, the understanding, like, if you're going to sell unicorns, you got to paint 100 unicorns. <laughs> yeah, you guys are sort of an interesting cross between artists and barn jumpers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hi, everyone. Uh, it's fine. I was put into acting classes, dance class, but I am not allowed to use his name. And made uh, and I made him a promise I would never sell artwork because selling artwork killed him. Yeah, I think. I again, I don't know your dad, but that sounds like he. There was a journey there, and there's probably information from that journey. Mm. Unfortunately, his parents. Um, sometimes I think we, in an effort to protect our kids, uh maybe see things through too narrow of a window. Yeah. And, you know, being a parent, I can say it's hard, it's hard to be able okay, that was to my monologue. <laughs> relate to all that. But I'll come on. Boop, End of the boop. year monologue on, I, I don't know what artists needed to hear that right now, but that's the thing. If you're having trouble with your, with your art and you're trying to do it professionally, um, examine your business. Like if you take, you know, abstract art to all of the Southwest art galleries. Yeah, no one's going to hang you. Not unless it's abstract Southwest art. That's just a bad business decision. It has nothing to do with your painting. Mm. You know, and I, I would see that a lot. I would see people come in with portfolios to the gallery and oh man, they were never going to get in. Not because they weren't good artists. They just made a series of terrible business decisions mm. in that moment. Like putting their good art on bad materials in a really wrecked up, portfolio thinking that the gallery was going to like uh frame them stretch them and fix it the gallery is not going to fix it i'm going to take my fluid paint and i'm coming along and add a bright highlight up here can you mute me uh yes i can i can make you and then i can also make you disappear you're muted and disappeared did you need to sneeze? I'm going to leave you muted for a second. Well, so she's just dotting some more titanium white while she's waiting for her nose to tell her that she needs to finish the sneeze that I stopped because I couldn't put the, push the button in time. And so she was mid sneeze. And then the sneeze said, no, you didn't do it fast enough. So now she has to work up the sneeze again. You know how you kind of do that. <laughs> I want to go. I want it back. See, now what will happen is I'm going to bring her back, and then as soon as I do, she's going to want to be like, oh, well, I got to sneeze. Okay, there you are. I you see. guys see how the snow is just, look at that when we pull out. Does that look like little bits of snow that have just gathered? Finger on the mute. Gathered, gathered, gathered. All right. There we go. Let's call that a step. Oh, we could step it. Karen's, how do you use learn the business side? Um... A good place to start is uh, Accelerating the Curve. It's an, a book on art business. Another one is Jack White's The Art of Making It. Um, there's some good resources out there. Um, but, you know, just having a foundation understanding of marketing and business, is, is it's important, right? Like, that's how marketing is very critical to you getting your artwork out there. Marketing is everything, you know? And so... You can learn, use the same resources a lot of other businesses use for their marketing and their business side of things, but you've got to have a sense of how to read a contract and you've got to have a sense of like how to collect a bill. You, you are not an investor in a gallery. Oh my goodness. You're not an <laughs> investor in a gallery. So if your painting sells, they need to pay you right now. Yep. So yeah, <laughs> this is a whole different thing. So- <laughs> Sounds like stop, stop, stop. Well, All right. Did well, we do a step? Okay. Oh, we, we stepped. <laughs> All right, let's p- add some um, new kind of layered over pine needles that are going to kind of layer up over the snow. Discord seems like a good place to get your unfiltered opinion on that. Maybe that would be <laughs> just... Little, little Sherpa after <sighs> hours gives you the straight from the, the straight tube Straight skinny, fact. straight from the tube, no dilution. 
<laughs> so it's we're adding a pigment. few pine needles coming out of the snow just to give it, just to give it some depth, right? No shade. No shade. Isn't that nice though? When you add just a few and just pulls it in, maybe a little bit. Community agrees. Hmm. Need to see this. Sherpa. What? After dark. After dark. <laughs> Explaining the world according to you. Art business according to me. I have so many strong opinions. <laughs> I would, <laughs> would really upset a lot of people, I'm sure. <laughs> what do you mean you don't have a five-year business plan? <laughs> I don't know why, right. but I become Debbie Allen from fame when I'm working with professional <laughs> artists. <laughs> I'm like with beginners, I'm like, the world is love and light and I love you and hugs. And then with professional artists, I'm like, what are you doing? This is fame, sweat, blood, work harder. It's very weird. It's like a strange flip. All right. <laughs> you seem to be a really far into the So I'm going to go in and start my uh, pine cones. Again, I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow and my red and together, making a nice kind of uh, bright orange. I might put out a little more yellow right on my palette because I seem to be a low on it. There it is. Got lots of red. And we're gonna start shaping out the pine cones and getting them all built up themselves. Do you guys love this snow or what? Isn't that gorgeous? Uh, the tr uh, C. Blanton wants to know if the traceable is available. It's already on the website. The traceable's there waiting for you guys whenever you want it. Getting a little brown to it. All right. So we've got that mixed out. Now I'm going to take a little bit of this black over to my um, brown over to my black. So it's the burnt sienna over to the black. And, and I'll put out a little more burnt sienna. And these three colors are what's going to help me find my pine cone. Find your pine cone. What I'm looking for is my brown that I put over here, just out of my visual sight. Here it is. I have to keep my hair dryer on my trip paint tray. And, ugh, I gotta rethink my positioning of everything. We do. Well, we maybe do. that's something we'll do in the next thing is we're gonna be rebuilding. Making rebuilding. It All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come to the end here. I'm going to very carefully kind of think about these little pine cone scales. And they are scales. You know, it's an interesting thing. Mm -hmm. There's and, you know, people who have grown up around pine cones. Mm -hmm. so you can say, you know what a pine cone tastes like? And they're like, yeah. you know what I do? I don't know. I can't quite tell you why I do. <laughs> because at some point. You put that pine cone in your mouth? Some, I think at some point I chewed on a pine cone. You probably did. I don't know why or when. Why would I, you do that? But you did it. I did. And I know what it tastes like. <laughs> I'm just scaling these in now. I've got my um, nice little silhouette so I know where things are. Right? That helped us quite a lot, didn't it? This one's interesting because we have the center here we have to do. And I'm just getting this dark color in first, then we'll come in with our other little highlight colors. And it'll go pretty fast. It is. I don't condone the, the eating of pine cones <laughs> at all. I like pine nuts. Pine nuts are good, yeah. But I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> it's one of those weird things. We all also know the difference between soil and clay. <laughs> Just two distinctly different tasting and chewy. Oh, my mom has so many feelings on this, as you well know. I do. <laughs> all right. So we've got kind of those nice little beginnings. Then I can come back in with some just burnt sienna. I can add a little of my red to it. Let's come here and kind of start to 
piece out. little shapes of the leaves and you can see when I'm in the center here I'm going to come across and they're foreshortened and then come towards you Irene says so what does it taste like and I think Mary Myers answers it best it doesn't taste like chicken It's like pine salt. <laughs> it tains, tastes like pointy, crunchy wood. No, piney, pointy. It tastes like you're cleansing your mouth it's, with wood. It's. Th I remember the crunchy, pointy bits being the most difficult to overcome. <laughs> That's so. That's good. We're gonna continue on up here. Again, I was a I was a Boy Scout, so it was a lot of time in the woods. I don't know how that came to be. I'm going to kind of improve the angle here so that I can get some nice scales coming down. Just adding those little scales. Okay. When you get to there, you're going to come into your light color, which we mixed earlier, which was your orange, your bright yellow orange, with a little bit of brown. Okay. So I'm going to add white to it now. It's a good question. Okay. As you're transitioning into these thicker and thicker layers of acrylic, mm -hmm. are you using more and more traditional like acrylic techniques or yes. you're using less water yes as you layer up right like in the snow that's a pretty traditional acrylic technique these pine cones are in a pretty traditional acrylic technique by the time we get to the bird there's going to be a lot of a traditional acrylic techniques happening there uh-huh so many There we go. Little pine cone doing this little pine coney thing. As they do. You know they do. Pine cones be pine coning. Quiet pine cones. Quiet pine cones. Well, you know, it's a quiet forest. What are you going to do? It's the eight-minute lull. Is it? <laughs> Am I in an eight-minute lull? No, I'm not lull. Have you ever heard of that conversational thing? <laughs> where, like, you're in a group of people every eight minutes. There's a lull? There's a lull. And, you know, it's not every... It's, but very often inside there. And there's, like... There's this... There's a whole bunch of, uh... Like, um... skills you can learn to identify when it's you know ha happening Lulling. and how to keep momentum and change the is direction. that what you're doing right now you're trying to fix the lull well it's funny <laughs> all right so here we go we have some little pine cones in look at us go and then even when those are in and we'll do the rest of them when we get the bird in because they the final little quills can be over the bird so here we are let's take a look at that how are we doing that looks pretty good isn't this pretty it's just pretty. I think it's pretty. It's just, you can't get there with just watercolor and you can't get there with just acrylic. It's just an interesting little journey that you can take, you know, where you get some of these things. Um, Crystal Blake, uh, Cinnamon, I have the Simply Simmons number eight long handle brush. What's the difference between the long and short handle? My brush looks larger than yours does. That's the difference. Um, so in brushes, as, and, I, and I, if you haven't done the beginner acrylic painting course, please do.
But one of the things you're hearing me talk about in the brush video on that is that there's no standard in brushes. Literally between sizes, um, there's just, it's just crazy. Even in the same company, between brands and sizes of the handles, so the, sh the short handles can have like a number 30, but a number 30 on one brush to be like this big and a long handle, it's just insane. So even if you're very familiar with the long handled version of a brush company, you have to learn the short handled version of the brushes. Mm. Fun times for us artists, right? Yes. Can I make the transition more clear, please? When you do the book, can you make the transition more clear, I'll, please? We'll check on that. Yeah, That's find out what exactly thing. that question is, because I'm not sure, because maybe I can go back into a segment. I'm going to just kind of add a few little dark moments here that I'm feeling. I'm going to do my bird. Now, my bird, you can literally come here and sketch him in with, like, a pencil, because it's on paper. So I can take a watercolor pencil and I can be like, oh, I want to sketch my, look at this, I can sketch my little bird in. So I can decide, I've got a little foot here, comes up and kind of comes in. I've got another little foot here. Means I've got to come back up this way with his little body. I'm going to show you the coolest thing with this watercolor pencil in a second. And this guy's little chest is a little bit more puffed out here. Catch in a little tail, pull it back down. You can even see how the feathers of the wings come up. And come from the back side as well. And then when I want to like change my mind on anything, I just kind of come in and erase as I see fit. Gotcha. Watercolor pencil. Totally gives me so many options. Or I even have to get anything else involved. So it's easy to sketch it in, right? And then we're going to start painting him in. And one of the first things I want to do is I want to take a little of my, oh, titanium white and my ultramarine blue. Come under here. So not a perfect white by any means. Come back to on this cheek. Let me get into the gray. Oh yeah. Just painting the tail. being very quiet so you we may not are i'm going to pull brush strokes in on the gray did we find out what robin's transition question was I, what type of pencil is that that's a Caron de Osh super color too soft it is the best watercolor pencil oh my gosh i love them so much <laughs> <laughs> don't be lit at all no i really do i love them so much they're just wonderful in every way that they could be wonderful I'm going to go ahead and get some black going. Oh, the watery paint, the thicker paint. So could you, uh, I think in the, in she's talking about as we have gone from watercolor techniques to 
acrylic, acrylic techniques. Mention that in the book. Okay. The All right. I I will I will make sure that we have a, a little note on that. It really kind of happened through the needles, then the snow and the pine cones. So we'll make sure that we're saying, hey, we're thickening up the paint. But you're going to notice as you go naturally that your paint is um, uh, not soaking in as much. You know, you're having trouble with the paint soaking in. Just loving that. So we're just getting that going. I'm going to also kind of paint out a little beak here. Now let's get into this yellow and red with a little bit of brown. Paint this in, kind of marking that little part of the bird back into my black. Making sure a nice little leg we're coming into. And we have uh, needles that are coming over that. So don't just get a good sense of it, but don't like wear yourself out on it. Let's right. call this a step because this is where the bird would come in. Yeah. All right. So we've got the bird kind of coming in there. See here. See there. Is it a step? All right. I haven't even changed. I'm not even changing anything. I might... To might get a uh, filbert greener involved in a little bit just because it's going to do a nice job. But I want to do a lot of this painting kind of like as I go. So I'm going to take my number eight Simply Simmons round still and make sure that I'm doing little loose strokes. I talk about those feathers. I still kind of want the gray white or under the belly. That'll be an interesting kind of popping the white chest there. Uh, definitely we'll have one more layer of white above that. Coming up over the beak. There's a little bit of white there. I love painting little birds. As you guys might have noticed. I could see. <laughs> I'm going to add a lighter gray. Get the tail feather. Kind of blew up that one tail feather so that when I come back, I can kind of layer it. There we go. It's kind of layering beautifully. Back into the lighter gray. And that into the main bird. I'm going to get a little bit of this gray and yellow together, interestingly enough. Oh. Hmm. See the little message here from Ashley again. 
Uh, I wanted to make sure your last live before New Year was a good one. Thank you for everything you do. We know how hard you guys work and it doesn't go unnoticed. Thank you so much, Ashley. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Really appreciate the note. Yeah, I, I, you guys have made what would have been not a great year, a good year. You know, I think, I think you guys have had a very positive effect on us as well. And you might not even know how much or how positively you have impacted us. It's kind of like that yellow gray at the back. Mm. I'm adding a little white back because it's just a very creamy yellow color. Get into the gray a little bit. Hmm. May was like to know: Is there? Is there different content on Roku than YouTube? Mm -mm. That's not entirely true. There's more there than's here. Because a lot other stuff ends. It's not that we particularly currently make uh, Roku specific, but we have put stuff up there that doesn't fall here easily. And we've been making plans to put stuff there that doesn't fit. I didn't here. know any of this. Well, we talked about it earlier. There's a bunch. The Roku kitchen has everything. You'll find that Roku has everything. Roku has everything. <laughs> because we can't put everything up on YouTube. But we can put everything up on Roku. Let's put a little brown and black together. I'll paint a very specific little feather right there. And then add a lot more white. I haven't rinsed out my brush. We just don't have Roku fully as developed as that are. Well, I think that's hard to do. Yeah. Bring a little wing tip over there. And I'm going to come down the center of that tail feather. Maybe that one too. I'm going to soften that out. Isn't that interesting how you can do? Mm -hmm. All right. We're getting pretty pretty good through here i'm actually rather i don't even know if i'm going to need the grainer because it's just going so well it's just i'm going to get a little black the bird emerges the bird does kind of emerge and i'm going to make a series of little lines is this a thrush I think this is a chickadee, but maybe it's a, I'm not really a bird expert. So if you're like a bird watcher and I, I mislabeled this, I'm super sorry. Perhaps it has arrived to tell us where the missing scale is on the dragon. I'm adding another little layer of black here. Quick to bring Smog's demise. Now I'm not rushing through this, guys, just really because I'm enjoying spending the time with y'all. Bring that kind of down a little bit, that little feathering there. Don, they all say it's a chickadee. Uh, Tina's going to have to do this one with my grandchildren. Watercolor paper is less than my canvas. Yes, it is. It's it is more economical to even use a good watercolor paper than um, canvas. I'm going to try to create little bits of lines there for the feathers and the wings. Might need to come back with a little bit of black. Back into my brown. Get some black. Kind of go across there for those little feathers. They say it's a black-capped chickadee. Okay. It's a chickadee. 
<laughs> this is a chickadee. I'm going to add a little more yellow to this mix over here and a little more white. Just a little bit right there on the belly. Just a little bit. Come up. I'm going to pop a little color right here. Just because it looks so pretty on the painting. Mm -hmm. Right? Let's get a little bit of our white. I'm going to add a white pop right there. Just on that chest. And a little bit on that cheek. And she's looking lovely. All right. Now. We are going to come back on another step and do some details like the eyes. I'm going to find my detail brushes and we're going to do the eyes, the beaks and the little highlights on the feet. And then um, we'll close out with the pines. So it'll be step 12. That's perfect. How long do you let it sit before taking it off the paper pack? I ordered, but just ordered one. I generally pull my sheet the next morning. Um, on my watercolors, I find they fully flatten back out by next morning. So I just let it sit overnight and then I pull it and it's ready to go. All right. I am going to get a little bit of my blue and white together. And I'm hopefully going to see really, really well. I'm going to come underneath. And then also up over. I'm making the very kind of light line. It is just a little bit of ridge outside the little eye. And then I'm also going to kind of add a little bit of that highlight, perhaps there on the beak. I'm going to come down to the foot, John. Make little hatching lines up the leg. Come over here and make more little hatching lines. If I need to, I will get into my black, 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 black. Back up to my beak a bit. Very carefully kind of make that a good beak. Little touches of the black, like to kind of be the little feathers on there. You know, that's going in that lovely. Yeah. I'm going to take a little of my fluid white. I'm going to just carefully touch the top of that eye. All right. A little highlight maybe back here. Just shaping that out. Sometimes it's super helpful, you know? Oh, thank you, Copperhead. Um, Michael Art says, awesome and how sweet. Love you. Happy to be with you. Give you so much for all you do and help us and teach us on how to paint. Thank you so much. I'm going to miss you guys till January. It's going to be hard. I, I'm going to probably bug my patrons, but <laughs> <laughs> thus, I miss y'all. Thus you saw the, oh, little bit of skepticism when you said, this is the last time we're going to broadcast this year. And I'm like, uh-huh. Maybe. Right. All right. So um, also on here, I want to do a thing. I want to take um, a little bit of black, and I'm going to kind of thin it out. And I can thin it out, which is sort of wonderful. And I'm going to kind of talk about maybe some of the pine needles mm. casting a little shadow on the chickadee. Oh. 
as they do, and that's kind of cool. Make sure that there's a little bit of fluff on the chickadee leg. So that's also cool. Okay. And if, um... All right, now, did we step it? We got to step it. Oh, thank you, Ashley. Is this a, is this it's all now? new step. New step. step. We're doing the last step. 11? Uh, no, it should be 12, shouldn't it? Uh, you are correct. All right. Should be 12. Let's go 12. Let's go 12. All right. I'm going to take my uh, green and my brown again. And kind of thin that out on this. And I'm going to make sure that some of my pine needles go in front of my chickadee. Yes. And also that some of them sort of go over different little parts. So it looks like there's layering. I'm going to get into my yellow, green, and tons of white. And highlight some of it. So this helps the bird be in the branch. Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. This helps the pine cones be in. Now I'm going to take a little of my blue and gray, and I'm going to come in and kind of desaturate maybe this little kind of in the pine cone and also here like a glaze, but it's just with my finger. Go down like the, the here, so I can darken that. So this type of glazing also is going to let me kind of shade some of what's going on here. Isn't that cool? Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, you need to be knocked back a little bit so you have more differential kind of vibrancy. If I need to kind of glaze Mr. Birdo, mm -hmm. you can come under here and Ooh. make sure that the belly and stuff has a bit of a... That was really cool. Shading. I can also take this moment and get back into my um, snow areas. Get a little snow going again. Oh, Merry Christmas, Virginia, and to everyone else here with us, too. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all of the holiday wishes. We look forward to seeing you on this not break break. We're going to take. This is the Dome Blender again, the Princeton Select Dome Blender, and I'm just adding little highlights. You know, maybe where we lost a few. That that looks a little bit better. Look mm, at that. That's pretty cool. And it's not bad, right? We're getting there. Not bad. I'll just play with my filbert grainer for a second. I'd venture to say it's awesome. Kind of make sure there's a little bit of a nice little highlight in both of these places. Oh, that adds a little feathery effect. 
Yeah, I like it. I think it's called the <laughs> effect. Yeah, it's the <laughs> effect. Little touches. You could just do a little tiny detail brush if you didn't have a grainer. Just this is kind of sometimes a nice brush to do it with. Get it all out. Let's look at it from a distance. From a distance. Oh my gosh, guys. Ooh, look at that. That's looking pretty good. Touches are happening. Coming back with my little yellow color and my little white, kind of just making sure. You can just keep playing until you're just happy. Just be happy with your painting, right? That's what you want to do. You want to be happy with your painting. Looks like I must have looked away when we were Sherpa there for a minute. <laughs> oh, it's so good to see everybody this year. Just as this is, again, I highly recommend this, this is a Filbert Grainer. Um, you can get the grass comb. So this is the Filbert Grainer by Princeton, or you could get a grass comb uh, in the Ruby Satin Line by Silver Brush. Or you can take a Filbert and a pair of scissors and make your own, all of it being <laughs> good, good, good. Boy, was it uh, warranty, void, where prohibited, don't run with scissors. Yeah, if you if you modify your brushes, the thing to know is that, uh, like an Apple computer, once you modify, you void the warranty. <laughs> it's, it was it's, never yours in the first place. To void or, yeah, you're just done. It's, you were uh, just renting it. You didn't know, like your John Deere tractor. All I'm just the, adding uh, little kind of dots with this. See, that does a nice little dot. All right. I don't really know. I feel like pretty good about this. What do you I'm guys think? Good. All right. That's so I'm going to come in here and sign. I'll go ahead and use my white. In the new year, if you'd like to see some more paintings on paper using watercolor, uh, using acrylic in this method, um, let me know. Because this is really fun and we can do some really cool, completely different than everything that's out there thing. You know, because there's a lot out there and it's kind of like a lot going on. But with this, you can do some really unexpected stuff. I'd love, John, to take you on a tour around this, especially on the snow effect. You know. Let's start over here in the snow. On the booty. You got to focus. Focus, focus, focus. There Look we go. That. Look at that Look little at birdie. That amazing distant snow and effect. I, That's incredible, I, right? Yeah. I love the little effect of between, because the separation between four you know, foreground and background with that with that effect is really good. It really is. And it gives you just a lot of dimensionality that you might not necessarily have. And you have so much more flexibility on paper because the paper also binds the paint. It's and you get a good paper like the Fabriana Artistico and the ex the, and the extra fine white. Um the sizing on it is amazing. So uh and if you can't get that the Strathmore pad brown cover amazing. And you can see, I think you guys have watched this stretch mm. and uh, continue to soften. You watch this. So if you go back to the beginning when it was wet and warbled to now, you've actually watched this stretch. How cool was that? So you can see it happening. I'm still going to let it sit here until tomorrow so the paper is fully dried out before I remove because it'll make it easier to frame. Um, you can frame this in a ready-made frame um, that has a 9 by 12 opening. And you just taped with, uh, to the mat using oh. uh, acid-free tape and then put all the glass in. Remember whenever you're using, whenever you're doing your own framing to wear gloves and safety glasses when working with any frames with glass. Because that stuff explodes every once in a while. Ashley, thank you. Get Ashley's been like so generous. Thank you so much, Ashley. Everyone's been so generous. <sighs> Uh, oh my goodness, a charity C. Uh, thank you for being joining a emoji club. I really appreciate it. I love all our emoji club members. I love our YouTube patron members. If you're a YouTube patron member, remember you've got to write us at the website so we can get you your dashboard and to join the group and everything. Um, if you're uh, so go over and do that. Um, I can't wait to see your versions of the chickadee. I want to know what you think of this process. If you jumped in and went ahead and tried this with me and you want to try more experimental art techniques, let me know what you thought of this because I had fun today. So if you had fun and I had fun, 
I think we might need to do it again, don't you? I think so. I would love to do this again. Is it hot press or cold press paper? It is cold press paper. Um, on acrylic, I like the cold press because the bump lets me do a canvas-like dry brushing, but you can do the hot press if you want a slicker finish on the surface, Amethyst. Um, I just like the cold press because I like the bumpity, 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 bump because it feels a little canvas. Um, we are going to be back um, sometime uh, in January. So we're going to be, a, but you know, I'll be posting, I'll be around and you, you can send me pictures know. and you, you can say hi. And there's, we did 203 videos this year. Yeah, we made we're you in the, 203 we're in the tutorials. We're, we're going to coast the rest of the year. So you may or may not see us again. That's just, you know, where it may be. 203 videos, tutorials. <laughs> yeah. We, 128 gonna... mini books were created. Um, that's a lot, man. So thank you, Lori. Thank you, Lori. That's a lot. So take advantage of some of that. Go back and, and look at the beginning. Look at the mini books. Try a lesson maybe that you thought was too hard, but you didn't have the mini book. We did a beginner acrylic painting course. We did acrylic April for the third year in a row. We did some stuff this year. I'll try to send out a newsletter between the, before the end of the year to give us a look back at the amazing work that we did. Guys, it was a good year. Oh, we did painted dogs for Big Art Quest. You we might continue corgi painting dogs butt. in the next year because that's Where's fun. Hmm? You, did, you did a cute corgi butt. We did corgi bum bums. Corgi bums are the best bum bums because we've got a corgi and we agree. Yep. <sighs> been a Idea for future paintings. Chinese New Year is February 1st and it would be the year of the tiger. Hint, hint. Edie, that is a very good hint. Thank you. I will write that down in my notebook. Christine S., thank you so much. I appreciate that so much. Thank you. And I appreciate all of you for just coming and spending your time with me. You guys have choices out here. You have stuff you could be doing, trusting me with your time. And it's a good amount of time. It's a big gift. And I hope I'm helping you paint. I hope I'm helping you enjoy your art process. I hope I helped make 2020 uh, and 2021 a little bit better than maybe they could be. I hope I helped in some kind of way. I know you helped me through these last two years. And knock on wood, I hope 2022 just gets a lot easier for all of us. Mm -hmm. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.